Hello guys. Welcome to Atemkit Academy. On today's video we are going to talk about real lines, decimals, and significant figures. What is a real line? A real line or real number line is a line whose points are real numbers. Yeah real numbers. Do you know what a real number is? A real number is any positive or negative number. For example, positive and negative whole numbers. Minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2 and so on. These numbers are known as integers, represented by letter Z. Real numbers are also fractions for example. Minus 2 thirds, minus 1 half, minus 1 third, 1 third, 1 half, 2 thirds and so on. They are also called rational numbers represented by the letter Q. Rational numbers take the form B on A where b is the numerator and a the denominator a and b are integers a can't take the value zero if a is equals to zero then the fraction is undefined real numbers are also numbers that cannot be written as a fraction they are also positive and negative numbers for example minus the square root of 2, square root of 0 0.2, square root of 2, square root of 3, square root of 5, pi and so on. They are called irrational numbers. Let's look at how we can easily identify an irrational number. Irrational numbers have decimal expansion that neither terminate nor become periodic. For example if you take the square root of 5 you are going to have 2.23606797 and so on. Let's look at this value again. Have you seen any pattern that is repeating? The answer is no because they are n repeated pattern, they are known to be non-periodic. When you look at this decimal expansion you can see that the value is never ending hence they're non-terminating. Let's take the number pi. Punch this on your calculator you will get. 3.14159265365 when you look at this decimal expansion you will see that it is non-terminating and non-periodic you can also check this other values let's go to another set of numbers called natural numbers they're positive whole numbers starting from 1 2 3 4 and so on note this when using the number line 0 is considered to be a natural number but i didn't include it because it is neither negative nor positive and 0 is not used to count objects this is the reason why some people might include and some people don't let's take a look at this set of numbers again we see that they are a set of positive integers let's go back to the real line also known as the number line on the number line, we've zero in the middle. Positive integers on the right. Negative integers on the left. We can see that when we move to the right, the numbers keep increasing, hence. 4 is greater than 1. Moving to the left the numbers keep decreasing, hence. Minus 1 is greater than minus 4. This means that every positive integer is greater than any negative integer. 0 0.2 is greater than minus 2000. Now, we are going to represent these numbers on the real line. Somewhere between 0 and 1 on the right we have half with decimal expansion 0 0.5. Here we have 1 third which has the decimal expansion 0 0.333 and so on. We say we've 0 0.3 repeated. On the left hand side of 0 we've got minus 1 third. Somewhere between 0 and 1 we can represent 5 sixths. To the left we've minus 5 sixths. The square root of 2 is between 1 and 2. The constant pi is closest to 3 we can represent it here. And minus pi on the left we've seen how to represent numbers on the number line. Let's take a look at the following decimal numbers with the decimal expansions. 1 third. Punching one third on our calculators we get this. Let's see what two thirds will be. Factorizing two thirds we get two times one third. Multiplying this we get this value. What about three thirds? Factorizing three thirds we get three times one third. This is equal to 0 0.9999999999, which is approximated to one. 
since the limit will actually reach 1. In real life, we can easily use 1 than 0.9999999999. Imagine going to the shop to buy a loaf of bread and you say, could you please give me 0.9999999 bread? Ha ha ha, I think this will be weird. This takes us to approximations. Before we move forward with approximations I'd like us to look at the decimal expansion some rational numbers. 1 7 which equals 0.1428571.42. Looking at this expansion we can see some pattern repeating 142 is repeating hence we it is periodic and non-terminating unlike a rational decimal expansion which is non-terminating and non-periodic. The same goes for 6 sevenths. Here we have 8 5 7 as the repeated pattern. Moving on to approximation. What's approximation? It is the value that is nearly but not exactly correct. I'd like us to take note at nearly and not exactly. If something is not exactly correct then why do we use it? We use it because it helps to make our calculations easier. The mathematical symbol for approximation is this. Let's approximate the following decimals. Before we start, I would like us to understand the rule of rounding. If the number you are rounding is followed by 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 you round down. But if it is followed by 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 you round up. Okay. Now we are ready to start approximating. Approximating this to two decimal places we count after the decimal point, 1, 2, we see that the number next to 2 is 8 which means we round up 2 to 3 to get 0 0.43. So we say it is approximately equals to 0 0.43. To three decimal places we get 0 0.429. To one decimal place we get 0 0.4. Looking at this other decimal expansion, to two decimal places we get approximately 2.72. To three decimal places since 2 is next to 8 and 2 is less than 5, we round down to get approximately 2.718. To one decimal place we round down since 1 is less than 5 to get 2.7. This decimal expansion represents the Euler's constant. You can also approximate whole numbers. For example, let's take 2827 which has four significant figures. First we will place this under 100 tens and unit, we have seven units, two tens, eight hundreds and two thousands. Approximating to the nearest ten. We see that seven is greater than four hence we round up two to three. By doing this we get 2830 with three significant figures. Rounding off to the nearest hundred, we see that, 2 is less than 5 hence we round down to get 2800 with two significant figures. Rounding off to the nearest thousand. Here, 8 is greater than 4 hence we round up 2 to 3 to get 3000. This value has one significant figure. Sometimes we often misinterpret the meanings of the following terms. Approximation. Precision and accuracy. Most often we feel that by approximating a value, we make it precise and that when a value is precise, it is accurate. I would like to elaborate on these three terms so that we can understand the difference between them. So far, we have seen how to approximate values moving from a large digit of number to a number with fewer digits. From this we can say that approximation is the simplification of a value. Now what is precision, accuracy and how are they different from approximation? Precision refers to how much information is conveyed by a number in terms of its digits. Whereas, accuracy is a measure of correctness, that's how close the measured value is to the true value. For example let's take the Euler's constant which is equivalent to this value. We are taking this value to be our target value. Supposing we are conducting an experiment to obtain the said value of the Euler constant. Let's say, in experiment type 1 we obtain 2.715.
In experiment type 2 we got this long value. And in experiment type 3 we obtained this value. Comparing these three values to the true value. We can say that the value obtained from experiment 1 is closest to our target value hence it is accurate. Looking at experiment 2, the value obtained carries more information. Hence it is precise but not accurate because it is far from the target value. And lastly when we compare the value from experiment 3 with the target value. We see that it is closest to our true value and it conveys much information hence it is both accurate and precise. Let's approximate the Euler constant to three decimal place we get. 2.718. We see that it is not exact to our precise and accurate value. Let's approximate the accurate value, the precise value and the target value to two decimal place. We will obtain 2.72 for the target value, 2.72 for the accurate value, and 1.72 for the precise value. From this we can say that an approximated value can be accurate but not precise. With the real number line we can do some arithmetic operations that's addition, subtraction, multiplication and division. There are some mathematical basic rules for operating approximations. Number 1, addition and subtraction rule. This rule says that, when adding or subtracting numbers with decimals, leave your answer to the least number of decimal places. For example let's take 827.562 plus 13.06. This has three decimal places and this two decimal places. Three is greater than two hence this has the least number of decimal place which is two. So our answer will be in two decimal places. Adding this we get 840.622 leaving our answer to two decimal place we will get approximately 840.62. Subtracting these numbers we get 814.502. But since we have to leave our answer to the least decimal place, it will now be approximately 814.50. Moving on to our second rule. Which is multiplication and division rule. What does it say? It says that when multiplying or dividing numbers with decimals, you should leave your answer to the least significant figure. For example, let's multiply 827.562 by 13.06. This gives 10807.95972. Let's look at the number of significant figures. This has 6, this 4 and this 10. Taking the least significant figure, our answer will be approximately 10810. Note, the last number 0 is not significant. Now let us divide these numbers, we will get this long number. Leaving our answer to the least significant figure it becomes 63.37. So far in this lesson we have been mentioning the words, significant figures. I would like us to understand the meaning of significant figures and its rules. When we say something is significant it simply means it makes sense or is important. The figures that make sense or significant are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 0 is significant depending on its position. Now let's look at the rules for significant figures. Number 1. Non-zero figures always count. Example, 364. Here, all the figures count so we have three significant figures. 36.4. Here also, all the figures count hence we have three significant figures. Rule 2. Zeros between non-zero figures to count. For example, 3064. The zero between 3 and 6 does make sense. So we have four significant figures. Let's look at this other number. 3.0064. The two zeros between 3 and 6 to make sense as such, we count them. Therefore this number has five significant figures. Rule 3. Leading zeros after a decimal or at the end of a number don't count. For example, 
0.0064, has only two numbers that make sense. Thus, it has two significant figures. Looking at 3000, only one number makes sense therefore we have one significant figure. The last rule. Rule 4. Zeros after a decimal point to count. For example, 3064.0 has five significant figures. 3.0 has two significant figures. 3.00 times 10 raised to the power 4 has three significant figures. Before we end this lesson I'd like us to talk a little bit of scientific notations. Scientific notation takes the form a times 10 raised to the n power, where a is any number from 1 to 10 but excluding 10. n is the power to the base 10. And n must be an integer. When n is greater than 0 that's n is positive. This means the number we are working with is a whole number and we shift the decimal point by counting from right to left. When n is less than 0 that's n is negative. It means the number in question is a decimal number and we shift the decimal point by counting from left to right. Let's work on some examples, convert the following numbers to scientific notation. Number 1 since 4 is a whole number we count by shifting the decimal point to the left by doing this we have 0.4 times 10 raised to the power 1. Number 2. 40 counting one step backwards gives 4 times 10 to the 1 power. Two steps backward gives 0.4 times 10 to the second power. Number 3. 4 million moving 6 steps backward give 4 times 10 to the 6th power. Number 4. As a decimal number we shift the decimal point from left to right. By doing this we get 4 times 10 raised to minus 5. Number 5. 682 times 10 raised to 3. Moving two steps backward we get 6.82 times 10 raised to 3 times 10 raised to 2. Following the law of indices we add up the powers to get 6.82 times 10 raised to power 5. Number 6. 0 0.682. Moving three steps forward we get 682 times 10 raised to the power minus 3. In this video, we discuss the real line here we talk about real numbers and represented them on the number line. We were able to look at the non-terminating, periodic and non-periodic properties of some decimal expansions. We look at approximation and its significance. The difference between precision and accuracy. Rules for operating approximations. We also looked at significant figures and it rules. And lastly scientific notations. Hope this video was helpful. For any remarks or correction please drop it on the comment section below. This will help me to grow. Please don't forget to give a thumbs up and subscribe for more interesting videos. Thanks stay blessed.